Yo, what's good? What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy Q on the CB, and now I'm back with another motherfucking reaction video. You know what I'm saying? Today's going to be reacting to our favorite YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? Um, truth, the truth is, P Diddy, the gatekeeper, exposed. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, P Diddy's hip hop gatekeeper. You know what I'm saying? Exposed. You know what I'm saying? True talk. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, but yeah, man. Y'all know how y'all know that a lot of people already said that P Diddy is like is so damn evil. He's a snake, which is which I, I, I it's kind of obvious because if you hear that shit from for more than ten people, it's the truth. Cause everybody's not making this shit up, bro. You know what I'm saying? I just heard some new news that that I already knew that he 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 got big kill to keep his um. Keep his words because he, he he living off Biggie, bro. That's why I get rid of Biggie, bro. Man, that's what I'm telling you. Man, he was a fucking snake, bro. He did he, all his artists bogus, bro. From Biggie to B5 to 112, all of them, bro. Sheen, Shine, you know what I'm saying? He didn't ain't really write like that, bro. I see how he did them on uh, making the band and shit. He didn't ain't write that. That nigga's a fucking. I don't know, man. But yeah, man, if you like to give a thumbs up, don't give a thumbs down. Can't know why. I be no care this at all, you know what I'm saying? If you want to see more reaction videos, me or another video, let's do it. Make sure you guys my channel, take my videos. Do that my videos on my channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, subscribe. Let's get straight into this video. Let's go. Let's get it. Hey guys, I hope all is well. Thank you for joining me for this Truth Talk episode. In today's episode, we're going to be talking... And if the video look, if the video look like it's freezing, it's always the reason. If the video look like it's freezing, it's because I'm recording off uh screen record off a of, off of the, another device. I need to get my MacBook fixed. You know what I'm saying? So bear with me. You know what I'm saying? Bless the video. Talking about P Diddy, hip hop's gatekeeper. But before we begin, I just wanted to give a special shout out to Drip for sponsoring this video. For those of you who don't know, Drift is a company that offers great air products for your car or home. They have awesome car scents that come in either wood, metal, or stone. Each month, they introduce a new scent of the month, inspired by the seasons, so you always have a new scent to try. Drift offers a variety of different scents, mm. and the best part of it all, they only use premium essential fragrance oil blends, free of any harmful chemicals that traditional fragrance companies use. Yeah. They don't use parabens, phthalates, BEA, or mineral oils in their scents at all. This is a game changer as just about 98% of other air fresheners sold today contain all these harmful chemicals. All you have to do to use the drip air scent is attach the metal clip that comes with your order to the sun visor of your car. Remove your scent from the plastic and wipe off the excessive oil and attach the scent to the clip with the magnet on the back. Just like that, your car instantly smells great. The Drift Air Scents are very stylish and they look really nice in your car. Unlike other cheap plastic air fresheners that are like nice, Drift actually sent me two <laughs> new wood scents for me to try. The Teak and the limited edition scent, Supernova. The Supernova scent is definitely my favorite out of the two, mm. as it has a fresh, clean smell. I usually don't do air fresheners as they're loaded with chemicals and they often give me a headache, but Drift was the complete opposite. The smells are amazing and you can tell they are high quality. So if you want to try Drift, sign up today for a monthly subscription using my code true 55 to get 55 percent off your first month the code mm. is in the description thank you drift for sponsoring this video now let's get right into thank it you. since the creation of the music industry there's been a few men who have been chosen to be the gatekeepers to fame and success mm. a system created by the higher up elites of the music yep p diddy jay-z oh uh, who else beyonce um, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. My just can't name them all, but yeah, them three, yeah, the gatekeepers, yeah, yeah. Business in order to ensure a sense of exclusivity and control in the music industry. Mm -hmm. These people who are elected to be gatekeepers earn their spot and are given immense power in the music system. These gatekeepers determine who gets a major record deal and a huge music career or who ends up never making it. The gatekeepers take orders from the elite and they are in charge of making sure certain agendas get pushed in the mm -hmm. industry. So in other words, the gatekeepers are the one picking and instructing artists in the music yep. industry. These gatekeepers are responsible 
responsible for the rise of genres like drum music and gangster rap. Yep. They're the ones instructing the A&R of the labels to look for and sign street drill rappers with any inch of clout. Yep. The artists who push a positive message or isn't pushing their agenda they never are get ignored it. or blackballed and are never allowed in the mainstream. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad. That's why that man. Oh man, I'm glad that he said that shit. I've been saying that shit for years. Like that's why it's got a lot of positive shit going on because the frequency is too high. You know what I'm saying? You gotta match their frequency with this very low vibrational frequency. If it's not drill rap or about sex or nothing, it's not. They're not gonna put it out there. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's fucked up, bro. Now, now these people that that were that came from the ghetto. Treat their people like that. I don't get it. I don't get it. P D came for the came for the um this I'm not gonna say struggle, but he came for the hood and this shit. Um Jay Z came from the hood and shit. Beyonce and all came from the hood, but you see how they treat their people, bro? Over some fucking money, bro. Like, come on now. People money hungry ass people, bro. I would never respect nobody who who are who are sellouts like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit crazy, bro. What about this video? Industry. In this video, we're gonna be talking about one of the biggest gatekeepers in hip hop, P. Diddy, yeah. and what he requires from the artist to get his approval. Diddy is considered hip hop royalty, being a part of hip hop since the 90s, behind some of the biggest rappers in the industry. Yeah. Bad Boy Records is one of the most legendary record labels in the business and brought us names like Biggie, Mace, Little Kim, French Montana, MGK, and alongside of many other artists. Diddy is one. French Montana. One of the go-to guys when it comes to making superstars. The only thing is that Diddy's cosigns come at a very steep price. Diddy got his first shot in the game all the way back in the early '90s. And you see how everybody that he that he was associated with now, with back then, is now dead. Andrew, um, um, I'll be sure, Kim. You see, how nothing never happened to Diddy, but everything happens to them. He a snake, bro. He a snake, bro. He a snake. Diddy is a fucking snake, bro. And he, he, I, I recently just saw something of him calling Meek Mill daddy and shit. He called people daddy and shit. The fuck? Y'all favorite artists. Y'all, some of y'all favorite rap, Meek Mill, Rick Ross. Call him daddy and shit. What the fuck? Another grown man called another grown man daddy. You know what I'm saying? Like, pretty weird. He weird as fuck. That's the video. Being given an intern position over at Uptown Records after he graduated high school, he was able to learn the game early and was lucky enough to work with artists like Jodeci and Mary J. Blige. Jodeci, he a heavy D, years, that he was all day. He himself a reputation as the guy who threw a massive wild party. Well, what, what, I, what I mean is like, what, what I was saying, I forgot to finish the rest of the names. Heavy D, dead. Kim Porter, dead. Andrew, dead. And I'll be sure almost that. That's the, the, most of the people that he started out with, bro. All dead, but nothing really, nothing happened to him. Bing, bing, bing. You know what I'm saying? That shit, that shit is wild as fuck. That shit wild as fuck. Look about this video. By 1993, Diddy had dropped out of college and ended up getting fired by Uptown Records, mm. leaving him with no label. Mm. When it appeared that Wonder Diddy's why. career in the music business was over, he would surprise the world and make a massive comeback when he decided to create his own record label, Bad Boy Records. Before Diddy was fired from Uptown, he had just so happened to sign one of the most legendary rappers of all time, Biggie. And this would be a move that would change his life forever. When Diddy started Bad Boy, Craig the first Mack, dead, were Biggie Biggie and Craig dead. Mack. And with these artists, Diddy Rest would make it to the them, top. Man. Diddy became the executive he is today after the success of his artist Biggie, who he used Can't, to launch his Bad Boy Records horribly. enterprise. After the passing of Biggie, the success of Bad Boy only grew larger and larger to the point where it was obvious that Diddy was a permanent hip-hop figure. We already know the industry is wicked, so it's important to acknowledge that Diddy's success came at the price of a loss. Yeah. In order for Diddy to rise, Biggie had to fall. Yeah. Just like so many others who make it big in hip-hop. Yeah. 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 It's so crazy, though. All the, everybody that, that, that said they broke it with Diddy, they say he's a horrible person. Everybody. Everybody say that. Everybody that he, that he worked with, for making a bid, that's how he treated them both. So I seen that shit with my own eyes. I don't ever remember that show. 
American event back in the day, you know what I'm saying? He made that ass walking shit, bro. Like, come on now. Like, B5, I heard that he treated them bogus. I heard that he treated Shine bogus. I heard, I heard he treated, he got, he took out Biggie because, you know, Biggie was his, big was his, was his, was his meal took out the hood. You know what I'm saying, bro? And he, he, he still living off Biggie. That's why he had to take Biggie out because he knew he, he, he a snake, bro. So that's how you got to be careful who you do business with, bro, because you never know, bro. That, man. What's the video? Did he show signs early on of taking the oath? Did he, like the rest of the Masonic puppets, can be seen doing the, the Masonic all uh -huh. eye symbolism? Let's take a look. The thing I'm obsessed with most about Curology is that Kanye West also recently blasted that yeah. he's calling him an industry handler. Kanye he openly is. said that he was working for the elite who run the industry. He, he was is. trying to convince the him to stop speaking out about the industry practice. When he's talking about the elite, he's talking about the Jews family. Like the Rothschilds and stuff, you know what I'm saying? He's talking about them, you know what I'm saying? Y'all you know, know that a Jewish family owns, runs the industry, you know what I'm saying? To it's, use black people or anybody to, to uh, create engines to make us destroy our own people, bro. You know what I'm saying? Some people need to really look at, really look deep into that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, this shit crazy, bro. It be our own people. They be doing, they will do some crazy shit to get, to, in order to get the time. Like, start bringing them up and shit, bro. But you'll use them. Then, if you don't need them no more, you you, you get rid of them. And I, I, I would never accept that shit. Uh, no. No. Let me pass this video. Kanye accused Diddy of being a mouthpiece yeah, for the elite, and he said that they were trying to use Kanye West to silence him. What's interesting yeah, they is that Diddy only became the executive yesterday after Biggie passed, something that I find suspicious. Yeah. Many people believe that Biggie might have actually been set up by Diddy he himself. Did. See, Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, revealed some very interesting information when it comes to Biggie. Gene said on Vlad TV and on other platforms that Diddy didn't care if something happened to Biggie because Diddy knew Biggie wasn't going to resign to Bad Boy. Now, first and foremost, was Whoa. it true that um, Biggie told you he was leaving Bad Boy's Bad Boy Records? Well, Biggie showed me the paperwork. I, you know, I had read his contract, you know, on the way to L L.A. Because I was on the plane and Puff gave Same me a you know, <laughs> What's in here? So They set that man up, bro. They said, my man, it's, it's crazy though that they had to take out Biggie, man. That shit was wrong, bro. That shit was wrong, bro. They set my boy Biggie up, bro. Man. And this time it makes it like it was about all about Tupac. No, it was not. That shit was not about Tupac, bro. That shit, all that shit was a fucking setup, bro. They said, they said Biggie and Tupac against each other, bro. Because they knew that if Tupac and Biggie. Was the, man, they would have ran this shit on my mama because they had their hip hop game on, on chokehold from east coast to west coast. You know what I'm saying? Man, bro. And so they have to create some type of beef to get Biggie and Tupac to go against each other. Because before this shit even, even happened, Tupac and Biggie was real cool. They was real cool, bro. Somebody set both of them up, but now look what happened to them. They both dead, bro. Well, I don't know about Tupac, but I know Biggie did, but yeah. But yeah, let's go to the video. I was reading the contract. When I was telling Big about his contract, he was like, yo, how you know that? So then I said, man, you broke it. I'm teasing him because look at this. So now he was showing me the contract. Then I think it was for 62 million, 6.2 or the 62 million. Right before <laughs> Biggie passed, it was rumored that Biggie was offered millions of dollars by a different record label. And he was going to leave Bad Boys to sign that deal. Biggie was going to give Diddy one album and was going to leave Diddy behind. And I believe Diddy wasn't too happy about it. He wasn't. That. It's also important to note that Diddy... And that's, is why, and that's why you're not, not supposed to tell everybody your fucking moves, bro. People, it's a lot of snakes in the grass. You know what I'm saying? Don't tell everybody your fucking moves, bro. Especially the person you working for. You know what I'm saying? Like, that motherfuckers, man. Puffy always been a snake, man. Come out and said before that he feels guilty for what happened to Biggie. Then right. He was the one who instructed Biggie to go to right. in the first place. Why would, why would you feel guilty what happened to Biggie? Because you did, you, got, you had something to do with it, bro. You a snake ass nigga. 
You know what I'm saying? I know I'm, I'm my best for keep pause, but I, I'm very passionate about shit like this. You know what I'm saying? That, that he wrong for it. I've been, I've been saying this, y'all. Message video. Strangely, Biggie's last project was called Ready, Ready to, to die. die. As if he knew it was going to happen. In my opinion, what I honestly think happened. Well, I, and let me, let me tell you what I actually think. I feel like he trying to, like, he, you know, you know, the record labels, they, they, they know before, before, um, before him, you know what I'm saying? That, I, man, it's, it's, it's crazy. I don't know. It's, in my head, it sounds, I don't know how to come, uh, make it come out of my mouth because it's, I, in my head, it's, it makes sense, but when I say it, it's not going to make sense. It's hard to explain, but yeah, that's about this video. And after looking into it, is that Diddy set up Biggie to go to LA in order to get rid of him. Yeah. Diddy saw an opportunity to make Biggie's last project huge, and yeah. he took it. He owned all of Biggie's catalog, yeah. and once he passed, he was able to capitalize off of it. A technique that is still being... Did I say that? Oh my God. I just said that earlier. He got Biggie killed because... Big was making all that money, and he was fit that if Big would have left him. Oh man, that shit crazy. That shit is that shit is wicked. Set that man up. Used to this very day. It wasn't long after Diddy started getting massive maze. power in the industry that rumors started to circulate about his behavior. Many different stories have been spreading around about Diddy that all point to the same alleged behavior and explains what he is charging as admission into the industry. We have spoken about Diddy's behavior you in the too past, touchy with more, more information just keeps you on too coming touchy out. Nothing the with rumors the must be true. Like According to many artists and people who are in the industry, allegedly, Diddy requires something way more than just talent and the look to receive his cosign. Diddy wants artists to give it up to him for his co-sign. Allegedly, he requires male artists to give themselves to him in order to sign them or give them an opportunity. Like we spoke oh, about no. before, that's, these allegations started to... That's selling your soul. You know what I'm saying? That's selling your soul. I wouldn't... Man, I would never do no shit like that with nobody, bro. Never. As bad I, I want to become... Be, be, a, be a, a good influence, bro. I would never do anything... Crazy to get to the damn top, bro. I ain't doing none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's watch this video. What he spread about Diddy after a former industry artist named Jaguar. Jaguar. I love her. Him for requiring a male artist by the name of Christopher Williams to give him a little extra for a record contract. Jaguar Wright claimed that one of Diddy's love former her. entertainment lawyers told her she had walked in on Diddy while Christopher Williams was servicing Diddy. Jaguar also claims that the lawyer told her that Diddy approached her about what she saw and told her that he does what he wants and fired her. Diddy has never publicly responded to these allegations, and I'm pretty sure I know why. Mm -hmm. Jaguar okay, also claims that Diddy had something to do with the passing of his former partners, a part of Uptown Records. She recently did an interview where she brought up an interesting point when she said all the founders of Uptown Records Hello. mysteriously passed. Ex That's what I'm saying. Oh, my God. That she ah! Okay, Jaguar. Okay, Jaguar. Yes. Oh my God! I I just said that. I remember I just said that. Like, it's so fun how everybody he started out with is now dead, or I'll be sure was almost almost died, bro. That shit is crazy. It's funny that she said that shit. Oh man, Jack, I need to watch that interview. For Diddy and I'll be sure. And strangely, I'll be sure was in a hospital in a coma for months. Right. I'm sorry. I'm a little yeah. upset about it because I'll be sure just came out his coma. I've been talking to Al, Man. texting back and forth, and I'm just glad that he's alive to text. But when you think about Kim, I was thinking to myself the other day, Uptown her. Records started with five people. Mm -hmm. Andre Harrell, mm -hmm. I'll be sure, mm -hmm. Heavy D, uh -huh. and Puffy. Mm -hmm. And Kim mm -hmm. was the longest working employee. Mm -hmm. there from the very beginning. She's Andre's personal assistant. Mm -hmm. Kim is dead. Mm -hmm. Heavy D. He is dead. Andre Carell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and I almost died. Yep. Heavy D was fed face down in the heart attack. Andre Carell, heart attack. Kim died from pneumonia. Another person who came out and exposed Diddy was one of his former bodyguards who told a strange story about Diddy and Ja Rule. Diddy's bodyguard told the story of how he recalls a time 
He was out shopping with Diddy, and Diddy decided to go to an adult toy store. His bodyguard then claims he witnessed Diddy purchase adult toys that are specifically designed for women. The bodyguard claims that he asked Diddy, what was those toys for? With Diddy responding to him, let him do his shopping by himself. His bodyguard explains that Diddy would just prepay for what he That's wanted by giving shit. the store a brown bag full of money. The employees would discreetly bag the items for, that he chose. So you no trying to make them strip for him. Get the money. Oh, yeah, you want that? Yeah, that he tell you he tell, man Diddy is a bisexual man. know what he was buying. Diddy's bodyguard then claims that Diddy would later meet with Ja Rule and take those toys with them into a room alone, where they would stay there for hours. Another person to expose Diddy regarding this type of behavior was Exhibit. Exhibit. Claims Diddy took him to a party where all he saw was a bunch of guy on guy activities. We get what to the this club fuck? and we walk in the back, the way back way, so VIP lines ain't nobody in there. You know the club is going, it's all jumping, and then I'm sitting there with, with old girl. And then so then uh, you know he he's doing his business. We go down and get a drink. You know we sitting there bobbing to the music, and then he say, she point over the corner. It's two dudes kissing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what the fuck is this? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay. then there's girls in the club too. And then she point in another direction. It's another dude over there like, 50 Cent also claims that Diddy tried to do the same thing to him. 50 Cent claims that Diddy would often ask him to hang out, but he always refused. Yeah, 50 even claims that one time, Diddy even offered to take him shopping and pay for it. Like 50 was a girl he was trying to impress. The nigga right. was like, yeah, like first he was hamping him to get right. stout. Then he was like, yo, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we can hang out. We gotta, we gotta oh, kick it. It's possible. Okay. You're telling me we gotta... It's so crazy though. Damn, it, it, you know it's true if it came from more than one person. You heard Exhibit said it. Now you hear 50 Cent saying it. You heard Jaguar Wright saying it. You heard. You see. You see. I, I recently just saw a video of him and Meek Mill in the pool calling, calling him daddy. Rick Ross. That shit crazy. Think about this video. Pickers and he was like, yo, why don't we like go shopping? I said, I mean, like, I pay for it. I'm just saying. This is a little fruit. My pop is a fruit pop. A fruit pop for real. Another person who told an interesting story. I feel bad for his kid. Was no one in the mega store usher who was only 13 when he was sent to live with Diddy to learn the industry. He said out of his own mouth, he saw things that he didn't understand at such a young age at Diddy's parties. All this behavior points to a clear picture of what Diddy is into. We know Man. those in the industry have their eyes wide shut theme parties where everything goes. And now we know who's the person hosting these parties. In my opinion, the rumors seem to be true. Diddy requires artists to give themselves to him in order to give the artist a cosign. I don't think so many different people would Friends accuse Diddy of oh, doing man. the same thing if he wasn't truly doing it. Something I also found interesting was the fact that Nori decided to sign over with Diddy's Revolt TV for his Drink Champs podcast. The reason I feel this is interesting is because of the fact that Nori had an interview with Vlad a while back where he spoke about the three doors in hip-hop. He said, in the music industry, there's three doors. Two of them lead to success and mm -hmm. one of them leads to failure. Yeah. He explained that one of the doors was the independent route yeah. where the artist will most likely never make it mainstream. Mm -hmm. Then he said that there's a second door where the artist has to compromise themselves yeah. and sell themselves yeah. like they do with Diddy. And the third door was where he claimed it was an Illuminati initiation. Nori claims he never made it because he chose the independent door. Yes. Fast forward some years later, Nori is now under Diddy, and we know exactly what door he took. In my opinion, it appears that Nori definitely chose to sell out and take the compromising door shit in order crazy. to have a success in the industry. Diddy was that shit is crazy though. That you gotta, in order to be seen, you gotta do some crazy ass shit. And people is okay with it, bro. And they accept it. No, bro. We need to not have to build our own shit. So we, we won't have to be, be, be relaxed on them, bro. We are the majority. They are the minority. How y'all let these so small people take control of y'all, bro? We, we, we all can make money together. There's enough money for all of us out here, bro. So why not create opportunities for yourself and other people? You know what I'm saying? That's don't build no, no weird shit that they own. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, this shit crazy, bro. What's about this video? He's been featured on an episode of Drink Champs where he calls Nori daddy a few times. Right! 
Yeah, that I shit. Like when you like this, daddy. You got five, five and Jada kids. They, have, they feel a little uncomfortable. Some people online also believe Diddy has something to do with what happened to his ex-partner, Kim Porter. Kim yeah. Porter and Diddy dated from the 90s yeah. to the early 2000s when they decided to split up. Kim and Diddy had a child together before Kristen, they split up. And in 2018, the twins, Kim Porter passed away out of nowhere. Right. Pneumonia. Back in 2020, it's not, it's not I'm no sure his boyfriend to Kim Porter came out and revealed some very interesting information about Kim Porter's past. They're using Kanye getting dropped. And Quincy's is not his fucking son. It's a why is Diddy on Quincy on a Diddy y'all. According to Albi, Kim Porter didn't pass because of pneumonia. She did Instead, she was taken out by Diddy. Yeah. Albi Short claims Kim was going to expose Diddy for yeah. what he was known to do to artists in the industry. Even yeah, though she to looked real footage of Diddy in the act. Albi claims that Kim was on the run from Diddy as she was trying to escape his wrath, but sadly couldn't. Apparently, Kim has tons she was of so dirt on Diddy man. and was using it to save herself. I, I hope them kids, man, it's so crazy. I had, man, he, man, why well, think, why well, think that Kim died? I was like, no, nah. no, nah. she was a, a beautiful woman, bro. And I hope, man, I know his, I know Christian, the twins, Quincy. Man, I know that, man. I know they know what type of evil, I know they, I know they know what happened to their mom, bro. And they know that, man. This shit crazy, man. Let's watch the video. Until I feel bit different of working kids, bro. Who knows what Kim must have seen while being with Diddy? In my opinion, Diddy wasn't going to allow her to confirm the rumors that everybody already believe about him. We must understand why Diddy requires this for his It's story. okay. Why can't more than one person? Diddy required this from Diddy himself. Those who run the industry are occultists who see themselves as gods. This yeah. is Diddy's way of flexing his power and showing that he is a god and that he can have whatever he wants. This is the price of admission the ego. to the industry. This is what you ego gotta give Diddy if you wanna be a star. So many people have exposed Diddy, and Diddy never seems to respond to any of it. No one does anything because Diddy is a gatekeeper, and he is protected by the elite who are above him. Diddy isn't the only one who operates this way. He is just Jay the one who's being exposed. All the gatekeepers partake in the same behavior. So many of the biggest stars Jay in the industry have been to Diddy's parties Beyonce. and have paid the toll to have Diddy's call sign. This is what the music industry is about. This is the wickedness that runs it. Well, like I always say, we must remember that every day we wake up, our souls are at stake. And we also must remember to help those who can't see the truth, find the truth. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it for this video. But before you go, yep. I just wanted to remind you guys that if you'd like to try and trip and get 55% off your first month, use my... Oh, that was it. Shit. That was it. But yeah, man... That shit crazy as hell, man. That shit crazy. Diddy is a, is a bisexual man. It's obvious because you see videos, you see other people talking about it. He do weird shit, bro. I'm not, I won't be surprised if his kids is roll that way. You know what I'm saying? Like Justin, Quincy. I don't think Christian gay, nah. He got to. Nah, I think they both, they, the kids probably go both ways. Um, I know he probably did something to the kids. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man. I'll see you guys next week. I love y'all. Peace out. Damn. And let me know how you feel, how you guys feel about it. Comment down below your opinions. Yeah, now I'm gone.